Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to All About Canadian Books. Behind every book is a talented author and a great story, and that's what we're here to discover. So first off, we are going to get to know the author of the best-selling novel, The Witches of Moonshine Manor, Bianca Marais. Bianca Marais is a best-selling author, an award-winning teacher, an experienced guest speaker, and the co-host of the popular podcast, The Shit No One Tells You About Writing, which is aimed at um, helping emerging writers get published. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Bianca. Thanks for having me. As you can see, I'm still dictated <laughs> in my podcast paraphernalia as I just finished a podcast interview, but it's wonderful to be here with you. Oh, I am thrilled to have you here and a big fan of your book and your podcast. And while I'm thinking about it, we'll put links down below so viewers can find that as well. All right, Bianca, to get to know you, we've got some quick questions. And are you ready? Ready. Ready? Okay. You are the owner of Fur Babies. What are the names of your fur babies? My fur babies are called Muggle and Wombat. When oh. we first when we first moved to Canada, we came with uh, as many pets as suitcases. So we arrived with four. Um, that was Mrs. <laughs> Norris, Dobby, Muggle, and Wombat. Aw, oh, and are these cats or dogs? Uh, I have one golden retriever and oh. one uh, cat. Nice. Now... In your novel, The Witches of Moonshine Manor, your witches are rather fond of cocktails. What is Bian Bianca's favorite cocktail? Ooh, that's a good one. Ah, I don't think I could just narrow it down, quite honestly. <laughs> I think the one I have the most is uh, a mimosa. Um, but yeah, I do love a margarita as well. <laughs> we're we're going to be thirsty after just talking about this. <laughs> now, um, you, your novel, of course, is about these incredible witches. When did the fascination for witches for you begin? Oh, I've loved witches my whole life from, you know, sort of fairy tales, etc. Um, I always felt like witches got a bad rap. You know, they were always cast as the villains in so many of these stories. But even as a kid, I kind of thought there's got to be more to the story than that. And then, of course, as I got older, you know, there was a lot more books about witches, TV shows about them. So, yeah, I've uh, I've always found them fascinating. They were the very first feminists. Uh, and so I think they're amazing. Amazing. I would agree. <laughs> now, I, I as we're talking, I'm just loving listening to your accent. So you you've come from South Africa. How long have you been in Canada, Bianca? Just over 10 years. I actually can't believe it when I say that. But yeah, just over 10 years. Wow. And what do you miss the most about living in South Africa? Oh, there's, you know, there's a lot. We have so many friends and family who are there. Um, and of course, we miss all of them very much. And, you know, Africa is just so singular. South Africa is a very, very singular country. Um, its customs, its people are just so incredibly warm. Um, you know, the sunrises and sunsets are are amazing. You know, there's 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 a lot to miss, but there is just as much to love about Canada. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, on that note, what is what's your favorite part about living in Canada? Oh my goodness, the people are just amazing. I love the winter and this upsets every Canadian when I say it, they get very, very angry with me. But you know, coming from South Africa, you kind of have two seasons. Uh, and what I love about Canada is how delineated the seasons are, you know, exactly what season you are in. Um, I tend to overheat in the summer. So I and, and the humidity kind of killed me. I wasn't prepared for that in Toronto. But when it gets cold, I am so energized and I absolutely love the snow. I still love it. After 10 years, people kept saying, oh, wait, give it another year, give it another year. And I'm like, okay, people, it's been 10 years. I think I can now safely say I love the snow. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Are you an outdoor person? Like, do you do lots of winter sports or... 
nerdy person at all. I am, you know, I was one of those nerdy drama kids, but I have learned how to ski since we came to Canada because you have to learn how to embrace it. Yeah. Um, and I do love a really bracing walk, you know, in the cold because I find that it really energizes me. Um, and yeah, I can't say that I've really taken up any of the I, I'm just, I'm not a sporty person. I've tried to be as sporty as I can in, in Canada, but yeah, no, not so much of the sport. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Okay. So what was the catalyst for starting your podcast? The shit no one tells you about writing, which is a great title, by the way. Thank you. Because when I started writing, there was a lot of shit I did not know. <laughs> Um, and you know what, it was a, a convergence of things. I feel like during COVID, you know, my whole summer shut down as did everybody else's. We had travel plans that those got canceled. So I had a free summer, but also I found that I had so many people reaching out on social media, asking me questions about writing, asking for advice. And I found myself repeating a lot of the same things. And, you know, I, um, I thought to myself, how could I reach more people kind of with the same advice. And even though I was not a listener of podcasts, I was like, let me start a podcast. Um, and, you know, I remember when I got my first 100 downloads, I was like, there are 100 people out there listening yeah. to me. And we're about to hit 1.3 million downloads, which oh. is hugely gratifying. Congratulations. That is thrilling. Wow. Thank you. Um. Okay. So... How has being a creative writing teacher influenced your writing? Oh, it's it has been amazing. You know, you when you write, you kind of understand concepts of writing, but you don't fully, fully grasp them until you need to explain them to someone else in a way that is accessible. That's not all woo-woo, because so much of writing feels like it's this woo-woo out there thing you know you talk with your imaginary friends and you just feel that something's right and it's that's not you can't teach people creative writing that way you need to be able to articulate in a very practical way why one thing works why another thing doesn't mm -hmm. um, and so it's made me approach my writing very very differently and I firmly believe it's made me a much stronger writer in the process well, Bianca, what would be your number one writing tip? And that's a hard one, I know. <laughs> it's a hard one because it depends on craft and it depends on so many different things. But honestly, my biggest tip for writers is understand that when you sit down to draft and when you sit down to edit, you need to bring two very different people to the table. When you are drafting, the critic should not be allowed in the room with you. You need to muzzle the critic. They need to step out of the room so that you can just do your thing. And then later when the time comes to edit and to polish, then you bring the critic back into the room. And the thing that I see with most writers is that they are their worst critic to the point that it becomes debilitating and they actually don't give themselves permission to write. Um, and you can learn craft, you can learn so many things about writing and you can improve and you can get better. But if you don't begin with muzzling the critic and giving yourself permission, you have nothing to begin with. Great. Love it. Last question, Bianca. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So what is the Eunice Nagogo Go Own Voices initiative? And then the second part would be, how did you become involved? So Eunice Ngogodo was my childhood caregiver in South Africa. Um, she is now 99. And I actually okay. saw her uh, when I was in South Africa this year, which was absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, and I credit Eunice with so much of shaping my political views in the world mm -hmm. because I was born in apartheid South Africa. Um, and, you know, Eunice was viewed as a second class citizen um, and, you know, degraded and treated really badly because of that. Um, but because she loved me so much and because I loved her so much, you know, it's impossible to see someone you love so much being treated in these terrible ways without questioning everything about your society. And so she was the person I dedicated my first novel to. She inspired my second novel as well. And so, you know, after writing both novels, um, 
And in both novels, I wrote from the perspective of black South African characters, because both novels were about racism. Uh, and I wanted a very 360 degree view of racism, not just racism from a white character's perspective. Um, and afterwards, you know, I had many discussions uh, with black South African authors, with authors across the world, with readers about, you know, appropriation, who has the right to tell a story. Yeah. Do I have a right as a white person to tell the story, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, even though black South African authors uh, told me that I did an amazing job with both of my black characters' voices, they did express how frustrating it was for them to be writing these stories of their own experiences and not being able to be published on the international stage. They were only being published in South Africa. So I decided that I didn't want to be a part of the problem anymore and I wanted to be a part of the solution. And so I started an initiative whereby I could empower Black South African writers to tell their own stories um, and to either fund them in terms of their education or to create opportunities for them internationally to become published internationally. Oh, wow. What a fantastic, fantastic thing to do. I love it. And I'll put a link down below, viewers, so that you can check out this uh, initiative as well. Wonderful. Okay. So, Bianca, thank you so much for answering my questions. I feel that we've got to know you a little better, and uh, but I'm not done with you yet. So, viewers, do please do no go. Ugh, I can't talk today. Please don't go away because Bianca will be back to tell us the story behind her best-selling novel, The Witches of Moonshine Manor, which was published by Mira Books, which is an imprint of HarperCollins. Thank you for watching.